Can everyone hear me? That's the big question. Yes, perfect. Hello, everyone. And welcome to this talk where I will share a little bit with you about my struggles as a remote worker. And there was a lot of struggle in the last months. Um, so this talk is about how I managed to stay healthy. Hey, hello, Jen. How I managed to stay healthy and how I recovered from almost breaking down. And it was a hard time for me, and I'll explain you why in a few seconds. But first, I want to tell you a little bit of my story. So I started to learn about remote work around six years ago when I was working in Portugal. And I had I thought about, about it as the perfect situation for me. As I kept moving from place to place all around the world, I said, no, this is for me. I want to work remotely. This is my dream. I want to travel and be a digital nomad and work remotely. So one year and a half ago, I managed to fulfill my dream. I was working for an amazing company. And now I launched almost one year ago, uh, my own company, Remote Work Movement. I have a podcast, Remote Work Movement, that you can see right here, where I interview really cool people. Surprisingly, two of these people are here. Uh, Liam Martin is one of the founders of Running Remote, and David Abraham is the founder of Outpost in Bali, an amazing co-work and co-living space, and he's actually right now speaking in the main stage as well. But don't leave. This will be very interesting. So... Some things you really should know about me and that are very, very important for this talk. I'm a super extroverted person and that means that I need people around me. I need people when I'm working, I need people to be happy and I need people to live. Without people, I feel empty and I suffer. <laughs> so you can imagine what's happening right now. I'm suffering a little bit and I love co-working spaces. That's why I love Outpost. I love almost all the co-working spaces. I'm, as a digital nomad, I only work from co-working spaces and I really, really struggle when I have to work from home. And also I love to travel and I get really bored when I'm in the same place for more than two months. That's why I became a digital nomad. So I was very happy last year traveling to, around Asia and then COVID-19 came, right? And now we are all stuck in our homes, which is not ideal for a super extroverted person like me. And to be honest, I really, really, really suffered. And this was my schedule in the first week. So I'm a remote work consultant. Um, I have all the companies reaching out to me to speak about remote work, newspapers. Can you tell, can you give us an interview? I have a lot of things going on. And my schedule was just, I woke up, I work throughout the day, 12, 14, 16 hours a day, and I went to sleep. As you can imagine, this was not great. Uh, I had no exercise and I love to do sports. I have no balance in my life, no time for meditation, no time for my girlfriend. I, had, I was working a lot of hours, but I was not making anything happen. I was not making a change. I was just delivering projects, speaking, speaking. I was just doing work and I really, really almost burned out. Uh, after the second week, I was on the edge of burning out and this is the worst time ever to burn out. So I had to make some change. I felt that I was really, really almost burning out. So I spent a weekend thinking about how I could actually change and make things happen. So I am at home, but still happy and still healthy and it was quite hard for me as i love to go out i love to play beach volleyball i love to do crossfit both of these images were taken last year in bali for example great co-working spaces uh, i could really work focused and it's very important to me to work focused i a lot of product to exercise i'm an athlete since i'm since i was born pretty much and I need to meditate because I manage seven, eight projects at a time. And if I don't meditate, it's very, very hard for me to take care and have the mental space for everything. And I need to connect with people. I need to speak with people. I need to be around people. And we are right now in isolation. So I needed these four priorities. So I just sit down, wrote these four priorities and start making a plan. How can I address this? And... For the first thing, I noticed that we need focus. And in order to do deep work, we need to focus in what we are doing. These are two great books. 
I'm sure everyone knows these two do amazing books. And if you don't, uh, please buy them. <laughs> they are essential for the era that we are right now living. But um, with deep work is when you are able to do your best work. It's when you are able to focus without distractions, without your Slack, without your WhatsApp, always shining, right? So you need to deep work in order to do great work. And that's only possible when you are able to focus in what you are doing. So doing something for an hour without interruptions is essential for the quality of your work. So I found this article from Paul Graham, Etiol and Essay, and it talks about maker schedule versus manager schedule. And if you haven't read this, please just Google it. It is amazing. And this is what was this was part of the change I decided to do in my life. So maker schedule versus manager schedule. Uh, Paul Graham tells us about the difference between these two types. There is only, in, in his opinion, two types of work. The first type of work, makers, is when we are building something, when you are writing an amazing article, when we are coding. It requires deep work. It requires concentration. Everything that's worth building is made on the ma maker mindset. We have no notifications. We are just focused on one task. That's making great things. That's where the magic happens. That's where everything that is building, that is delivering content, that is delivering value, everything happens during this maker schedule versus the manager schedule. And the manager schedule is answering emails, answering Slack, uh, being reactive instead of just being active, being on the defense, trying to answer everyone instead of being in offense, creating great things. That's why I think this article, this essay was shared by Tim Ferriss when I read it but the, for the first time. And it opened my eyes to the way we should face work. And it's very, very important that you spend at least some time in the maker schedule so you can really create something that people want to see. And then I discovered that the, the power of meditation. I was always like, yeah, meditation. I'm not sure if this is something for me. And it is. Uh, it really helps me. It reduces a lot of my stress. It increases my focus and it's the only 15 minutes of my day where I am not thinking about 10 projects at the same time. So it really helps me focus during the day. Even five minutes meditation during the day can really, really help me. And I think it also improves my sleep if I do it before I sleep. I'm not sure about you guys, but I really suffer in bed before sleeping. I'm thinking about all these things. And I really need something that helps me calm my mind down, calm the monkey mind, uh, as, a, as Headspace calls it. And yeah, meditation just changed my life as well. And I started everything at the same time. I'm meditating more and more, and I'm being happier than ever doing so. And then I had to create some rules for my work. And these are the rules that work for me. And I'll give you some tools in the end of the talk that help you keep these rules. The first rule was work in sprints of one hour. Instead of having five, six hours uh, all together where I just work, I'm working in sprints of 60 minutes with 10 minutes of break. So what this makes is that in the morning, I do four sprints like this and I get all my things done. I get the three most important tasks, tasks done and I do it so because I'm working in sprints of one hour and I only have one task per hour in the morning. It can be write an article, write a chapter for a book. It can be build a new training for a company. But it's just one task that I do for that amount of time. And then on the afternoon, I'm tired already and I, my productivity really lowers after lunch. I'm passing to the manager schedule. So I answer my emails, social media, create the posts, everything that's more reactive, I am doing in the afternoon where I can be less focused, but more active. And I don't fall asleep that way. And also I try to don't, not go into the email in the morning, but at least before 10 a.m. So I don't get distracted by all these balls being thrown on my way. So my new schedule looks like this. And if you remember my old schedule, it looked much worse. Uh, I'm not sure if you can read it, probably not, but the yellow times are the times where I take care of myself. Uh, in the morning, I wake up, I exercise, I meditate, and at 6.30, I try to exercise again. The blue is the times of my break. So I have break for eating, lunch breaks, dinner, 
And then the green is the time for relax. After work, I need to relax so I can calm my mind. And when I go to sleep, I don't just fall there without being able to sleep, which happens way more times than I would like to. With this schedule, although my, more diverse than the, than the previous one you saw, I can be much more productive. And you can see that I'm working half of the hours. I'm working seven, eight hours a day, but I can be more productive because I do all my important work in the morning and I focus on managing all the crazy balls being thrown on my side, emails, LinkedIn messages. You, you can imagine, it's crazy right now. And I manage all that in the afternoon and I, I can do both things. So I can both create value for everyone, create value for the people who follow me, for my clients. And in the afternoon I can ping and grow uh, through social media and through everything else that I need to do to make sure I'm connected with the world. So yes, with this schedule, I have more exercise and this is key right now that we are kind of stuck at home. I do relax much more, specifically in the evening, that time I can go watch Netflix, I can go read, but it lets me unwing from the work. I do much more meditation. I'm so happier now and I do more focused work. But this took me two weeks to learn. This was not like this. I'm an extrovert. I like to work outside. I like to work from co-working spaces. So my message here is like, don't be frustrated if you are working too much. Uh, try to change it and start change it slowly. You don't have to do big changes right away. Just go slowly and build on it. Okay, now I wake up always at the same time. Now I will start meditation. Now I will try to exercise seven minutes every morning. And we go through there. Don't try to change everything like I did although it works better for me. I want to share what is a perfect home office day for me now. Now that I built my routine, now that I build my care system for myself, uh, this is the day I built in order to be happy. So first I wake up and I, wake, I try to wake up at the same time every day. Although I'm in Lisbon right now, so it's midnight and I'm supposed to be in bed for two hours, but there are exceptions of course. But I try always, always, always to go to wake up at the same time to, so, you know, so I could also go to bed at the same time. And then it helps me to have a morning routine. And the first thing uh, about the morning routine is like, I don't have to dress, go outside, go to the gym, come back. I can just wake up and my computer is five steps away from my bed, right? So I can, I'm just working out in my living room where I have everything. I have some open space and I'm using apps. They were there all the time. I never used them before, but now because I have to work at home, I found that apps work for me. 8Fit is a great all-in-one app where you can have uh, recipes for food, you have uh, meditation, you have workouts, you have stretching. It's really, really nice. And then you have seven. It's seven minutes workout, Tabata style, really heavy. But if you are an athlete or if you were an athlete before, I strongly advise you Nike training app. Nike training app is really nice if you are an athlete, if you are more developed. I feel that the practice is stronger. And I used to do CrossFit when I could leave the apartment. So now I am uh, doing more Nike training app as well. And then Down Dog. A lot of people here say that they love Down Dog. Yes, I don't like yoga, to be honest. Uh, but I do need stretching and it helps me mobilize. And I think the app is really, really well built. More apps. <clears throat> no, first you need to dress up. I'm not sure. I I cannot. I'm not able to work with the pajamas on. I need to dress. I dress hoodies everywhere, so it's the same here. I just dress hoodies, some trousers, and I'm ready to work. And I can also squat during the day, which is something we are trying to do. So even if it's half dressed, it's okay. If you are in Bali, like Igor, uh, <laughs> or if you are around a warm place, half dressed is still good. You don't need to dress fully like I do. But yeah, dress sh helps change the mindset. Then the most important thing is schedule breaks. You can do it through the Pomodoro technique, which says every, 24, every 25 minutes work for five minutes break. And with like myself, I feel I work really well in one hour sprints with 10 minutes breaks. And that's what I do. And when I do breaks, I just get up, I go grab a coffee, I make some tea, I eat. And I love to just go to the window, do something active and leave my computer screen. And yeah, drink water, super important. Try to get some sunlight. It's really important to get some vitamin D. If you have a balcony, just go there. And one thing that I'm really enjoying right now is that in the middle of my day, I schedule one hour and a half of uh, lunchtime. And it's not because I take one hour and a half to eat. 
it's just because that's time where I can eat with calm and then I, or I go read or I connect with my girlfriend and we can do something. Just one hour and a half where it's break, no work, learning, something like that, but outside work. And that really helps me be more productive. If I try to go work straight ahead, I will not be very productive after lunch. I get really slow. <laughs> so I do this in order to have more time for myself, having some relaxed time and do some other stuff that I just enjoy doing, you know? Then in the end of short day, after working at 6.30 for me, I do write the three most important tasks I have for the next day. And this is super important. What will happen the next day when you write this is that you will open your computer and you will know exactly what you have to do. You know what are your three most important things. Not urgent, but the three most important things you need to do. And if you do it right in the morning, on, when you go to lunch in the middle of your day, you already accomplish more than you would probably accomplish anywhere else. So by having this really focused time, and you uh, knowing exactly what we need to do, we will be able to do 10 times more or five times like I put in the team of this talk. It really helps to have your mindset prepared. It also helps you, helps you leaving your work day behind because you are sure of what you have to do tomorrow. You don't have to keep doing stuff. One thing that's happening to all my clients is that they are working too much. And it happened to me in the first two weeks, I really worked too much. So have a break, schedule something, schedule something social, uh, maybe sometime with your friends on Zoom, but make, maybe time with your family, maybe go play. Um, yeah, work is not everything. Work will, like some, a friend of GitLab used to say, work will be there tomorrow. It's not going anywhere. So make time to connect. If you finish your work, there is always more work, but your family will suffer. So why not taking advantage of these times to connect with your family, to connect with your kids, even with your pets? just connect with something outside of your computer. But if you are living alone, and there are a lot of people are, you can also connect with other people through Zoom. There is a lot of cool things happening around. Very, very important is that you close your computer after finishing work. Don't go to social media on your computer, just leave the computer, go somewhere else and enjoy life. If you stay in the computer, there is always one more Slack message. There is always one more email to do. And there is always something else. Very important for all companies and individuals is social time. We used to live in tribes. We need social time to be healthy. We need to be happier. We are happier around people, even if you are introverts. If you are an extrovert, that's 10 times more important. So make sure you schedule time with your friends, with your colleagues, with your family. Schedule time to connect with them. Schedule time to just talk. Even with your teams, if you manage a team, schedule one hour on Friday, everyone grabs a beer and you'll speak about stuff. That's really, really important. Setting part. Um, if you have this time, you have more time also to play. When you have a really good window to work, you also have a really clear window for your kids, for you, for learning. And that's really, really important that you set priorities for everything. You don't need to be like this, that. There is people making uh, better things, but it's very important to set priorities and set uh, your time for each thing. Here are just some, before I finish, some tools I use uh, for meditation. I use Oak, I use Calm. I'm using more Calm nowadays. Uh, I use Evernote for all my notes. I write a lot, so Evernote is my best friend. I My different companies use different uh, pro, different project management tools like Asana, like Trello, but I have my own project management tool where I manage all my projects, including the personal, and I use Todoist. I use Zoom to share synchronously what's happening in my life and what's happening uh, to something that my teams need to know, I always lose Zoom. I use Twist for communication. We just had to do it uh, on the main stage. And I use one password or less pass. I use more one password for password management. Just for some tools that I really use and I really love to use every day. So this was my talk. I am the founder of the Remote Work Movement podcast. If you like podcasts, I really strongly advise you to go there and to listen to my podcast. I see here some of my previous guests like Shelly Fosse. Hello, Shelly. And thank you very much. And Shannon is already around here, but this is my contacts. Feel free to send me an email or connect with me on LinkedIn is where I am more active. Thank you so much. That was such great information. So it's time for our live Q&A. So do you recommend for team members who have a hard time closing their computer? One team member 
works even weekends, but she doesn't need to. I think it has a lot to work with the mentalities and with the other team members. If it's just one person, uh, that's probably she's a workaholic and she has nothing else to do. But I don't know. It depends on the team member. If she has kids, if she has a family, if she's alone. If I were alone, probably I'll also spend more time working, to be honest. So it really depends. Uh, doing sports and meditation really, really helped me a lot on this on reducing the time I spend on my computer and creating clear rules. One thing that works even better if we are not under isolation is that you can set up uh, any gym time, any classes. So you have to leave the computer right when you finish work. Right now, that doesn't work that well. So that's a little bit more difficult, but try to schedule something that will, will have you out of your computer as soon as possible. Next, what's the one thing you recommend people give up to start being more productive? Their computers, no, just kidding. Um, I think the thing that made the click for me was to give up my thought that if I spend more time on the computer, I will do more. That's just not true. For, uh, I can do more in four hours of focused work then I can do in 10 hours of random work, which was the way I used to work before. Meaning I can work more in four hours of the maker schedule than I can do in four hours of just managing from project to project. And I think that's the one thing I strongly advise to people to do is like focus on the maker schedule. Uh, besides that, of course, if you leave social media, it helps, but a lot of my work is done on social media. So that's just not possible. <laughs> You only get one hour and a half relaxation time each day. How might you, you we increase this with similar schedule? It depends of what you are looking for. So if you really check my schedule, I have one hour and a half of lunch time. I don't take one hour and a half of eating and I don't need that much time. So one hour of that one hour and a half is relaxation time. Uh, also in the morning, meditation is, re is relaxation time. Even exercise in some way is relaxation time for me. Meaning when I'm exercise, I'm not thinking about work. So if you put all these different things that are important for me together, I get four or five hours of relaxing time every single day. So that's how you increase it. It depends on what are your top priorities. So the first thing I would do is write down your four, three top priorities and just work on them. If one of them is exercising, maybe that's good for you. If one of them is just meditating or just watching Netflix or relaxing with your family, make sure you have scheduled time for that. How to manage time to respond clients and work sprints? I try to do it in the afternoon more. Uh, so that's how I do it. I have, I set my timer and I just go, okay, now I go through my whole email, my whole LinkedIn, and my whole messages in all the pages. And during one hour, I just answer people. It's a little bit exhausting, but yeah, it's the only way I can get to inbox zero. It's the only way I can get back to everyone. And today I didn't have the chance to do that. So everyone is still waiting. I didn't have one hour uh, to go there and to answer everyone. So people are still waiting. But usually I do it after in the afternoon. After lunch, I just set up my, 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 my time and you can search the app is be focused is the uh, computer ext Mac extension that I have. And I just go through every single email. It's not easy, but it works really well. How can you influence other people on the team to exercise? One thing that really works is gamification. Um, make a contest or make a yoga class for everyone on the team. Uh, I, I have a lot of my clients doing this, setting up uh, yoga classes for everyone. It works really well. Setting up exercises, imagine a higher uh, personal training that just do uh, easy exercises to do at home, body weight exercises like squats. It really works out. And then you can do gamification. You can have like a workout of the week where everyone has to do the max number of squats. And then you just start with gamification that, and it works really well. It's really fun. We love games. We work with games. And when you gamify everything, it is amazing what can happen. More. I am curious if size of space makes significant difference for people. That's... Yes, I, am, I, I, right now I'm in the small apartment in Lisbon, which is the capital of Portugal. And 
I, I don't have outside space. I do go outside. I have a garden nearby and I go there and I exercise sometimes there. But yeah, imagine if you have a big house with a gym inside. That would be my dream right now, <laughs> but I'm stuck in Portugal. Uh, so yeah, it can make a difference for people to exercise. For working, I'm right now in my living room. So I set up a table. I bought a monitor of 29 inch. And yeah, I just set up my own space in the living room because my bedroom is too small and that's okay. So I don't think it can influence that much unless you have kids. And if you have kids, it's very good if you have an office. Because if you have kids and you don't have a whole, an office, you will probably suffer a lot of interruptions. And then you can just, you have two chances. Or you embrace them like some people do. There is a cool article from Buffer that uh, that shows how they embrace kids and the different ways they deal with kids. It's really cool. Just check them out. And, or just close the doors and create some schedule for them, for example. What is async communication and how does Twist compare with other offerings? That's a good question. Asynchronous communication is all the communication that's not live. So email is asynchronous. Every communication that you send a message and there is no expectations of a fast answer, that's asynchronous. So email and Twist works that way. Twist is amazing. It's the best tool in my opinion for all my teams because you can separate all the conversation by threads. What happens on Slack, for example, is that if you are not live, if you, someone is, made, is in the conversation, you will lose track of the conversation. And if you arrive two hours later, you will not be able to see what people are talking about. And even if you do, you will not be able to answer and to have a voice in that conversation. Twist does the opposite. Twist is divided on threads. So for example, marketing Instagram campaign of April, and then everybody is commenting in the campaign of April and you will never lose track of the communication or the information. That's why I love Twist. No matter where people are, people have a voice and people can have a strong voice in their company. That's why I love Twist. I just changed one of my, the last conference I organized for to Twist from we're, we are just using uh, different communication tools synchronous and it just changed everything like everything is so much clear communication is so much easier we can speak about 10 different teams uh, issues at the same time and it's like it's just everybody has to talk about the same at the same time which is not great uh, right, what else what else how could how would you encourage more physical activity gamification i told you physical results in higher creative yeah I think, again, gamification, it works really well. And maybe offer, uh, Nike has a lot of gamification there as well. So if you get the Nike training app, it really works well. And it is really, really, really nice. Or just try to do, again, the classes I told you before. I think that's how you can encourage uh, physical activity inside your teams. And it definitely results in higher creative outputs. I love it. A lot of, if I don't work out and meditate in the morning, I feel it, uh, all my day is not the same. It's 10 times worse. I don't work as focused. Everything breaks down for me. Well, if I just work out and I do like 20 minutes in the morning, it is amazing the change. Even after, after I work, I never want to work out. I'm always feeling lazy. I'm sitting the whole day and I hate it. But after I'm doing it, after I start, after the first series of workouts i just i am i'm just all in and after that i feel so much better even if i don't want to do it in the beginning so yeah just try to gamify with your colleagues and try to challenge them for some challenges and things usually work out really well with gamification smiles and frowns people can do this can do smiles and frowns where people share things that are good and bend in their day one at a time it will help Thank you. Not a question. <laughs> How do you organize your Evernote? That's a very good question. I have a notebook for all my projects and I have two more notes. So I have one for my business ideas. I'm a ENTP. And if you know what, what Maya Briggs is, you know, I have... 10 business ideas a day. So I have a tab just for my business ideas where I put how I make money, what's the launch plan, etc. Doesn't mean I'm going to build it, but it's there in case I forget. I have one notebook for my any for all my projects. I have one notebook for my diary where and my weekly uh, goal settings, if that makes sense to you. 
And that's pretty much it. Projects, goals, diary, and business ideas. And I have a to-do, uh, I have a, a notebook just for meetings that I, I, all the meetings I have, I'm writing. So after that, I will put all that notes uh, on the weekend on the different tabs or action items so I can then take action on that. And then I put actions on the to-doist app. Mm, so yes. that is all of the questions in the exchange um so we've got four minutes left if anyone has any further questions you can pop them in the chat otherwise take gonzalo's advice and go stand by the window or close your eyes or stretch whatever <laughs> you need before the next session yes guys we have two more hours to go right three more hours to go three more hours and 23 minutes to go that would be fun <laughs> Would you please repeat your Evernote list again? Yes. So from, I will actually open it and see so I can tell you more accurately. So I have action, which is basically my action plan. I have the notebook where I write the notes of all my day. So imagine I have 10 meetings a day. I put every notes there. And then on, on the end of the day or on Saturdays, I will create action items for all my meetings and follow-ups, etc. I have all my projects. So I have a conference. I have a conference tab here. If I have my different businesses, consultancy, every single project has a tab, a notebook on my Evernote. I have bullet journal where I journal every day. I do my weekly tasks and I do my monthly reviews there. And I have my business ideas tab where I put down all my ideas that one day I would like to launch. It doesn't mean I will, but sometimes I do launch. And that's and I have a notebook only with books to read. I love to read. Uh, so I have a way bigger list than I will ever, ever go through. But I love it. This, yeah, business ideas, it helped me a lot. Like it has a couple of hundreds of business ideas. And then what I'm doing is like I'm collaborating in projects. So one thing I learned in the last running remote with Elias from Hyperloop is that collaboration is key. So I was trying to launch my business ideas alone and I was not able to do it. And when I wrote down and when I tried to find collaborations with everyone, instead of trying to get 100% for me and 100% of zero is always zero, I am now creating teams to work with me in the different ideas. That's why I'm working in 10 different projects at a time uh, because I have 10 different business ideas that I have teams working on. And I just work with them on the projects instead of trying and not doing anything by myself. So I have a lot of good ideas. I'm very good managing. I'm the worst at implementing. So my teams are helping that, uh, are helping me a lot with the business ideas. And yeah, that's how I built a conference last week. That's how I built my two startups. And that's how I built almost everything I'm doing right now. All about, all about collaboration. And that change of mindset happened in Bali in last year running remote. So that was one of the most valuable things I learned last year.